dressing room, number one. The best in the theatre. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Dressing room's a dressing room. Kind of like Japanese tours. They all look alike. <laughs> Anything you want? Uh, yeah, maybe just a little coffee. That'd be fine. Nothing stronger? Oh, I know a lot of you comics like to get in a quick couple before going out there. No. Uh, Dutch curry, do you like, huh? Well, no, I never drink before a show. Might need to here. Huh? Oh, we like to boast that there's only one thing worse than our critics. What's that? Our audiences. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you like to boast about that? Yeah, they've broken some of the best in the business. Oh, I've seen comics throwing fates on stage, throwing tantrums in the wings, throwing up over the orchestra. <laughs> well, thanks for all the encouragement. I don't mention it. <laughs> I'll get you coffee. OK. Looks like it's going to be a fun evening. <laughs> Hostile audience tonight, bad reviews tomorrow. Oh, well, it's only one night. Besides, I'll be back in my own bed by two. <sighs> It's incredible. It's a long way from those strip joints. Whew. That's where I started out in those strip clubs. And I practically lived out of my car at that time, see? Because this was in America when I started out. And these strip clubs were dotted all over the country. So I spent the good part of my year driving from job to job, see? Because they were never close together. And I get these real sadistic agents that give me these terrible itineraries. They'd say, OK, now here's what happens. You close Saturday night in Miami, right? You open Monday night in San Francisco. <laughs> well, that, that's clear across the country. Well, do you want the job? What do you mean, want it? I gotta have it. <laughs> and I couldn't afford to fly, see, so I had to drive. So I'd load my car up on Saturday, then I'd go to the club and work that night, do five, six, seven shows, whatever they wanted. And then after work, I'd jump in the car and drive straight through, see, because I was by myself, so I had nobody to help me with the driving. And I'd have to stay awake if I wanted to get there in time. I'd just have to stay awake. <laughs> I'd take anything to stay awake. I would eat Vicks Vapo Rub. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. Give me a little menthol rush. <laughs> I'd chew laxative chewing gum. <laughs> I did. I found that out by accident. See, I bought some at a truck stop once, and I didn't know it was a laxative chewing gum because I didn't know they made anything like that. But man, that stuff worked. I'm telling you. <laughs> It kept me awake. You don't dare relax. <laughs> Woo, boy, I'd be so busy looking for service areas. There's got to be one soon. <laughs> doing all these isometrics exercises. <laughs> Just praying I wouldn't get stopped, you know? All right, you want to get out of the car? I can't. <laughs> I mean, I can, but if I do, you better stand back. <laughs> Because when I finally did, it was agony. Walking in those truck stops, they always knew what was wrong because I'd walk in, hi there, how you doing? <laughs> Is this the way? I hope so. I, I don't think I can change direction at this point. <laughs> then I'd pass a truck driver walking the same way. Oh, you ran out of pills too, Because huh? <laughs> see, once in a while, I would take pills if I could get them. You know, sometimes some guy in a band might give me a pill. He'd say, what do you want? Want to stay away? <laughs> That's no problem, man. Here. Take this pill. This is good. <laughs> what the hell is that? That's a Guam turnaround. <laughs> what? A Guam turnaround. Man, you drop that pill, you could drive to Guam, turn around, and come back here. <laughs> and still watch the all night movie before you cry. <laughs> That's the biggest pill I've ever seen. I got a long drive, okay. So I'd take those pills, see? And they're not good for you. They're tearing on your body something fierce, but they kept me awake. I can't deny that. They would keep me awake. Did you ever go 24 hours without blinking? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I'd get on those things, you know? I'd be so wired on those pills, I'd come into towns running alongside the car. <laughs> okay, let's go to work! Talk about that tonight. That would be good. Come in. Uh, Mr. Monteith? Yeah? I'm David the Sound Man. What? I'm David the Sound Man. Yeah? And this is Ron. He'll be on the lights. Oh, okay. Well, I'll be out in just a minute to check everything. What? <laughs> I'll be out to check the sound. Don't you want to check the sound? Yeah. <laughs> and I suppose the lighting man here is colorblind, too, huh? huh? Uh, uh, never mind. Uh, I'll be out in uh, just a minute. I'll be out. Thank you. 
<laughs> At least these days, all I have to do is check the sound. When I worked on those strip joints, I not only had to check the sound, but I had to operate the sound, the lights, the curtain. I had to do everything, and I mean everything. Kiki, hurry up. You're on next. So, if I'm late, get back on stage. Tell him some more jokes. I just told him every joke I know. Thanks to Topsy, she got one of her twin 45s caught up on the curtain ropes. And that's a dumb broad. She's got to learn not to swing those knockers around backstage. Hey, no one's going to squeeze it, would you, kid? Huh? What, what am I supposed to do with it? Well, what do you think you're supposed to do with it? Stick it on my nipple. <laughs> yeah, but it's got, it's got glue on it. Well, of course it's got glue on it. If it didn't have it, it would fly off when I twirled my tassel. And all the guys in the front row would drop their newspapers off their laps and we'd get raided. Now, hurry up. <laughs> hey, well, where's my long gloves? Oh, listen, that's Topsy's last number. I gotta stop the tape. Hey! <laughs> I'd have to start putting these back on. I was helping Kiki put her pasties on. Oh, no figures. She'd do it herself, but she can't reach down that far. <laughs> hey, look, tell Kiki I'm only gonna do a minute, okay? Watch the guy in the third row. I think he's queer for you. <laughs> the jerk fell asleep during my coming round the mountain number. <laughs> okay, let's put those hands together. Let's hear it for Topsy and her twin 45s. Let's hear it for her. Come on. That's it. Yeah? What do you suck to? <laughs> yeah, well, there's old Topsy now, huh? <laughs> what a sense of humor, eh? <laughs> uh, where are you from, sir? Stick it up your ass. Oh. <laughs> uh, nice little town. I spent a week there one night. <laughs> well, moving right along, our next young lady comes to us direct from Paris, France. So without further delay, let's get those hands out from under those coats and give a nice treat for Louisiana. Welcome to Kiki, the Parisian princess. all the jobs backstage, but I had to learn new routines at the same time. <laughs> so, so you and Jaime are on stage, okay? Yeah. And you say, here comes a lady now, and that's when I come on. Okay, gotcha. okay you got it? Gotcha. And then Jaime says, where's your husband? And I say, he's out of town. <laughs> that's when your hat flies off. What? <laughs> your hat flies off. That's what gets a laugh. Well, how does my hat... Look, you've got your hat in your head, okay? Yeah. And when I go like this, you jerk your head back and your hat flies off. Should we try it again? Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Right. He's out of town. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a long way to go, kid. Two years of drama school for this? Hey, you went to drama school. Oh, you'll love the Shakespeare sketch. Shakespeare sketch? Yeah, Romeo and Juliet. I'm Juliet, it's my favorite part. Huh? I'm on this balcony, see, and you're down below in the bushes, only I don't know it. So I comes out in the balcony, and I says, huh? like this, yeah. Romeo, Romeo, <laughs> wherefore art thou Romeo? <laughs> Say. Oh, you say I'm down here in the bushes, the damn ladder broke. <laughs> <laughs> it's as old as the hills, but it never fails. Oh, geez, I gotta go. Huh? Madame Lardass is on her finale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She'll open with, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Come in. Mr. Monty? Yes. I'm Moscow Barton's, the manager. Oh, hello. Welcome to Le Teatre Bijou de la Famille. Oh, well, fine. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Looks like a good house. Yeah? Everything all right? Oh. Light, sound? Fine, fine, fine. See you have coffee? Yeah. How about something a little stronger? No, no, no. no I, I never drink before I go on. Oh, very wise, very wise. Yeah. 
Well, anything you need, don't hesitate to ask. <laughs> I sure won't. Hey, thanks a lot, huh? Bye. Amazing. Wasn't but a couple of years ago, if I came to a theater and so much as asked for a cup of coffee, the manager would call my agent and say what a troublemaker I was. <laughs> now they can't do enough for me. I don't kid myself, though. I know it's fleeting. I mean, as long as you're doing well, they'll treat you like a king. Ah, Mr. Monteith, welcome. Welcome to the Palace Theater. We have redecorated your dressing room with your favorite combination of colors, three blondes, two brunettes, and a redhead. Three redheads. Kids, two more redheads. And we filled your room with your favorite flowers. I don't have a favorite flower. I thought so. That's why I ordered a dozen of every kind. <laughs> we called Maxi to fly over with 23 of their most famous meat and fish dishes from Paris. I never eat before performance. Of course you don't. Shelley, throw the lot out. <laughs> Would you sign my breath? Mr. Monteith. Pleasure. Do you have a warm pen? Byron, warm pen. Thank you. Mr. Monteith, your name feels so good. <laughs> Through here, Mr. Monteith. Champagne, Mr. Monteith. Cigar, Mr. Monteith. Sex, Mr. Monty. Excuse me. Now, I realize this goes with the territory. As long as you remain successful. But one wrong move, one big slide down, and it's... Right this way, Mr. Monty. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Where have you been? I was in there. What, do you think I took a powder? <laughs> no, but I have to tell you, huh? when I walked into this dressing room, I smelled fear. I smelled the same thing. It turned out to be an old pair of socks behind a radiator. <laughs> you nervous? Nervous? No, not really. <laughs> Are you? Me? <laughs> Why should I be nervous? Uh, well, huh? here's to a great show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I pinched a nerve in my elbow, I think. <laughs> that was good whiskey. Yeah. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Monteith, would you mind? I know that smell. Malt whiskey. Glenn McIntyre. Fifteen years old. Right, every time. I knew it, I knew it. Huh? Secret drinkers are like guerrilla fighters. Takes one to know one. No, 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 no. I, I don't drink before uh, Would I... you mind signing this picture? It's for a little girl at the stage door. Oh, no, it'd be my pleasure. What's her name? Uh, Miriam. Miriam. OK, to Miriam. This wishes. What's his name here? Thank you, Mr. Monteith. Thank you. She'll be thrilled. Pleasure. I hope so. I mean, I sometimes wonder what happens to those pictures. Where does my face end up? Well, first of all, she show it to everybody, and they'll all have an opinion as to how you look. <laughs> and then it's probably put in some special spot where everybody can admire it at their leisure. <laughs> Then it'll end up on Miriam's bedside table. Lyman, you're living in a dream world. I think it ends up as a beer mat. I'll bet my nose has more rings around it than Saturn. Come in. Well, they're just starting to come. Yeah. Oh, it smells like a distillery in here. Couldn't resist a little nip, eh? <laughs> no, no, I don't drink before I go on. Oh, right, right. Anyway, we should be starting in 15 minutes. Anything I can get you? More whiskey? <laughs> Really, I don't drink before. No, 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 of course you don't. Course you don't. Right, 15 minutes, then. <laughs> don't forget to call the Undertakers. He's going to kill them. Lyman, hey, that's bad luck. Oh, I'm sorry, but you've got to cheer him up a bit. Oh. Otherwise, they treat you like dirt. I mean, look at this dressing room. What are you talking about? It's fine. I'm lucky to have it. I was in show business 10 years before I ever had a dressing room. Oh, come on. I'm serious. Lyman, I know you're not that naive. I mean, a lot of people, their conception of show business comes from those old show business films. You know, remember those old fantasy films? They always had the young boy singer starting out. The boss was always a real nice guy in the oh, club he worked in. Always had a girl looking on lovingly from the audience. <laughs> those films were so unreal. Ladies and gentlemen, the Club Wits is proud to present the scintillating song stylings of Les Moore. Oh, I'm the lucky 
lucky guy I've got the girl of my dreams When she walks into the room I get a jolt in my jeans Oh, I'm the lucky guy Whose heart's all aglow When she looks into my eyes My hope starts to grow We met on the sidewalk Selling our depression fruit Bells rang in chapels When she reached inside my bushel And she grabbed my golden apple And late at night When we're all alone My heart goes pitter-pat When she takes off this and that And then she moans and groans When I jump upon her bones <laughs> What was completely unreal in those old movies Was that the singer's entire act consisted of one song One lousy song Believe me, it was a long, long way from reality. Oh, Les, you're wonderful. Did you really like it, Meg? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Hey, Juan. Oh, hi, Mr. Acapella. Gee, I'd like you to meet my girl, Meg Foster. Hi, your sweetheart. How'd you like my show, Mr. Acapella? You call that a show? One stinking song? Well, yeah. Listen, punk. I ain't paying you to sing one lousy song and then come here and play footsie with some dumb bimbo. I am paying you to sing. So get up there and sing. But I... Get up there. <laughs> Champagne. Huh. Hey, Tony. Knock this off the punks of wages. Suppose you take your love and stick it up your nose. <laughs> My dear, you know. Through, why don't you decompose, my dear? Suppose you take your lips and button them up till they close. Oh, sweetheart, you're gonna sit here, you're gonna have to drink with some of the customers. Hey, Tony! get off, why don't you come back to my hotel? Was the prunes <laughs> that kept me running after She's okay, punk. She just passed out. Well, help me get her to my dressing room. Dressing room? You ain't got a dressing room. Well, sure I do. This is show business. I'm a singer in a nightclub. I've got to have a dressing room. Okay. I'll show you to your dressing room. Where am I? We're in my dressing room. We're also in the men's room. Yeah, isn't it great? I think I'm gonna be sick. Oh, just think, Meg. You and me, traveling around the country, 
working clubs like these, me singing my heart out, and, and you, you puking your heart out. Oh, Meg, Meg, isn't show business wonderful? Isn't show business wonderful? Mm. Yeah. Uh, this just arrived for you, Mr. Monteith. Oh, yeah? Uh, watch your fingers. Okay, thanks, Harry. Mm. How romantic! A rose and a love letter. Mm. Well, you're right about the rose, but ain't no love letter. It's from a girl I used to know called Sarah. What is this, a French farce? Come in! Five minutes, Mr. Monteith. Oh. <laughs> Relax. Listen, okay. I'll go out there and see what the audience is like. You mean see what the bar's like? Don't be silly. Well. I'll be out there watching your every move. Come on. Have a good show. Okay, okay. Well, if it's good, I'll see you back here. If not, have the car by the stage door with the engine running, okay? <laughs> It'll be terrific. Uh, Tear off. Well, hope they like it. I'll know soon enough. Mind you, you can't always go by what people tell you when they come back after the show. And sometimes they'll say anything, but boy, that was really funny. They'll tell me how good my suit looked, or how hard I worked, or how nice the stage looked. Anything, but boy, that was really funny. <laughs> Look, just go out and do the best show you can do. That's all right. That's all you need. You got good material. You know how to perform it, so why worry about it? Now, let's see, where's my lucky coin? <laughs> got all my lucky underpants. <laughs> wearing my lucky socks. Got my lucky comb. And I know where all the exits are, just in case I don't get lucky. I really should be in there watching. Hell, you've seen one comedian, you've seen them all. Besides, we deserve a drink, Scott. I really shouldn't drink on an empty stomach. It's better that way. Nothing in there to pollute the whiskey. <laughs> There's nothing to keep you awake out there. Nothing, you know, no radio. You get... <laughs> so I'm gonna sing to you. <laughs> so I just read all the signs. I still do that out of habit, see? I always thought they could keep you awake with road signs. And they try, but they do it all wrong. See, what they do, they, didn't, they do this in America, I've seen. They'll put a sign up that says, Sleepy. <laughs> this big sign with one word, Sleepy, with all these little question marks all around it, see? Now, that's supposed to make you alert, but it would work the exact opposite. I'd be wide awake, then I'd see that sign. Sleepy? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. <laughs> but come to think of it, I've been awake for 48 hours. <laughs> ah, the damn fool fell asleep and killed himself. What the hell, didn't you see that sign back there? <laughs> Doesn't work. Now, they could keep you awake with road signs. They really could. Just think how awake it'd become if you saw a road sign, Sniper Area. <laughs> hey, where the hell am I? Oh, duck down, you damn fool. That'd wake me up real good, boy. Or late at night, way out in the middle of nowhere, caution, werewolf crossing. <laughs> I didn't know those things were real. Oh, God, there's a full moon. Oh, please, God, don't have a flat tire, please. <laughs> don't let me have a flat tire. Now, they got some real signs that keep you awake pretty good. The ones you see all of a sudden, like, wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> so glad they don't have signs like that in life. Wrong way. Oh, no. 30 years. <laughs> 30 stinking years. Dead end. I know, I know. <laughs> Don't remind me. Then you got those signs. You see them in urban areas, you know? You see them around London a lot. And I know when the traffic engineers, they must have been drunk when they put them up. I figure those guys must work drunk. They must get in a room with about four or five bottles of scotch and start drinking and designing. And then about four hours later, hey, I got an idea. <laughs> hey, look, let's get them going 85 in the fast lane. Then we'll put this sign up. Lane ends in 10 feet. <laughs> that ought to give the bastards a rush. <laughs> Another one you see when you're doing about 60 miles an hour in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. See that sign? Merge. <laughs> Ooh, <whiff. laughs> British Leyland and Toyota merge today. It's interesting, too, about driving here. See, driving in Britain, I drive here. I don't have any trouble driving on the other side of the street. That's no bother to me. And I find, I find that I see the same things in the, in the roads as you do in America. Same basic objects you see all over the world in, in roads. Uh, you see a big hunk of tire. 
dead animal, and one shoe. It has driven me nuts, nuts for years. One shoe. Where the hell do them damn things come from? And why just one? They sell shoes in pairs. Is that some sort of impulsive act? Is some guy driving down the high, highway there and all of a sudden, I don't want this goddamn shoe anymore. I'll keep this shoe here. I like this shoe. Boy. That other shoe pissed me off. You know? And the last act I put on before that ham was an even worse turkey. In fact, you know, you couldn't imagine just how bad some of these turkeys have been. I think it's disgusting. You should try selling them. You know, what can you do? Well, for a star, I think the government should step in and do something about it. What could they do? More inspections, more truth in advertising, better cuts. Better cuts of what? Meat. We'll just get away with We're not talking about meat. We're talking about performers. Oh. Same thing, I suppose. <laughs> I don't think that's fair, you know what I mean? <laughs> if you got gray hair in your head, people got little sayings to cover that up, you know? Just because there's snow on a roof doesn't mean there's no fire in a furnace. <laughs> what if you got snow around the furnace door? <laughs> what do you say to that? But hair, it's interesting about hair because it's always been used as a form of protest. Uh, uh, I suppose it's the only thing we can change on our body. That's why it's been used to identify you with a subculture of some sort. It's been used uh, in religious significance. I was reading about this one Eastern cult. What they do is they shave their head, except for one braid. They leave one long braid right in the middle of the head, right at the top of the head, see? And the reason they do that is that's so God can reach down and yank them up into heaven. <laughs> Which is fine if you believe that. I mean, who am I to question anybody's belief? But when I heard that, I thought, no, that's not the religion for me. <laughs> I mean, what if God decided to reach down and yank me up into heaven at the same time the devil had me by the... Nuts. <laughs> Tom. That was a big laugh. Yeah, the only time you get laughed like that is if it's a crutch joke, breaking wind joke, or if you've left your flies open. <laughs> After 20 years in the business, you learn to spot them. Yeah, it could have been a nuts joke. <laughs> hey, that's his last routine. I better get back. Whew. Whoa, good show. Great crowd. Woo! Oh, good audience. Whoa, you're great. Whew. Yeah, that's really close. <laughs> great show. Huh? Marvelous. Just marvelous. Yeah, you really yeah. like it? And the suit looked great. Yeah. Excuse hey, me, Mr. Monty. Uh, would you mind saying hello to some friends of mine? Oh, great fans of yours. Let me get my pants. Pants are on. And... Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Would you sign this, please, Mr. Monty? Oh, certainly. be my pleasure. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Monty? Yeah? We certainly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. How do you go on for so long? Did it seem long? Mr. Monty, yes? I loved it. I don't care what anybody else said. Well, what did everybody else say? <laughs> Mr. Monty, we saw your show. And? Just wanted to let you know, we saw your show. <laughs> yeah? Mr. Monty, are you audiences always so quiet? <laughs> I thought they were pretty... Ah, oh, well, I was laughing. Ah, you were the one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise you used any raunchy language. Well, I, I, I hope I didn't offend you. Offend me? I love it. You get to my age, that's all you've got left. <laughs> 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 What do you want to celebrate? Get a uh, good steak, uh, a little fish maybe, uh, a couple of bottles of wine? Oh, come on. Huh? There's only one place open this time, this time of night. What's that? The Chinese takeaway. <laughs> Chinese takeaway? But we got no place to take it away to. Of course we do. Huh? The car. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. Isn't show business wonderful? <laughs> 